Senior Plasma Physics Lecture 4. The magnetic mirror will now be investigated. It will be shown that charged particles can be reflected from a region of high to low magnetic field. There are applications for this concept in both laboratory and space plasmas. In deriving the equations for the magnetic mirror, we will introduce the magnetic moment for a charged particle undergoing circular motion. Finally, we will derive the condition required for a particle to be transmitted through the mirror. This condition is called the loss cone. It is observed that charged particles can be reflected when traveling from low to high magnetic field regions. This is called the magnetic mirror effect. We will look at the cylindrically symmetric magnetic mirror as shown here, although other symmetries are possible. In particular, we will examine the case where the magnetic field gradient is only along the z-axis. We wish to derive the mathematical condition that predicts the reflection or transmission of a charged particle at the high magnetic field region. We start with this form of the Lorenz equation, where it has been assumed that there is no electric field. Also note that the magnetic field can have components in the z and r directions, but not theta. These conditions allow us to take the cross product V cross B in cylindrical coordinates, which is done by carrying out this determinant where the unit vectors are along R, theta and Z. We are interested in the Z component of the force because reflection or transmission along the Z axis will depend on it. To make further progress, we need this force to depend on the Z component of the magnetic field. As a result, we use one of Maxwell's equations given by the divergence of the magnetic field, which is equal to zero. This can be expressed in cylindrical coordinates by this expression that includes the radial and z components of the magnetic field. Assuming that the magnetic field gradient along the z-axis does not depend on R, we can rearrange this equation and integrate both sides with respect to R. Simplifying the resulting expression gives the equation for the radial component of the magnetic field, BR, in terms of R and the gradient of the magnetic field along the z-axis. Substituting this expression for BR in the equation for the force along the z-axis gives this expression for FZ. In practice, it is still difficult to work with this equation since the radial coordinate R cannot practically be measured for each particle. To eliminate R from this equation, we look at the radial force that was obtained from our cross product, FR equals QV theta BZ. We also note that the radial force for this system is actually the centripetal force. So we equate the radial force FR to the expression for the centripetal force minus MV theta squared on R. The minus sign indicates that the radial force points inwards. Rearranging this equation to make R the subject, we then substitute it into the equation for FZ to obtain this equation, which gives the dependence on the Z component of the magnetic field and the corresponding gradient. There is also a kinetic energy term of a half mv squared. Most importantly, the ratio of the kinetic energy and the magnetic field, BZ, is a quantity known as the magnetic moment, mu, of a circulating charge. It is from the properties of the magnetic moment that we will be able to derive the condition for charge reflection or transmission from the high magnetic field region. The magnetic moment, or specifically the magnetic dipole moment, is defined in the following way. Assume we have a circulating electrical current, I, that encompasses an area, A. The magnetic moment is the product of the current and the area. It is a vector quantity and its direction is in the same direction as the area vector, that is, at right angles to the plane of the current loop. In class, we will show how this definition can result in this form of the magnetic moment, which consists of the ratio between the kinetic energy and the magnetic field. In addition, we will show that the magnetic moment is a conserved quantity and therefore remains constant no matter where the charged particle is in the field as long as there are no discontinuities in the field. We will now use the property of the invariance of the magnetic moment to derive the condition that determines if a particle is lost 
or reflected from the end of the magnetic mirror. Consider a charged particle within the mirror with a velocity vector that consists of parallel and perpendicular components to the magnetic field. Recall that the expression for the magnetic moment is given by this equation. We can substitute an expression for v perpendicular by noting that sine of the angle theta is v perpendicular on v. Making v perpendicular the subject, we substitute into the equation for the magnetic moment. As noted previously, the magnetic moment is a conserved quantity and is constant throughout the motion of the particle. Also note that the half mv squared expression is the total kinetic energy of the particle and that also is a conserved quantity and therefore constant. So we can divide both sides of this equation by the kinetic energy so that we now have this expression, which is also a constant of the motion of the particles. Let theta naught be the angle of the velocity vector of the particle at an initial magnetic field B naught. Now assume that the particle has moved to another part of the mirror where the field is B and the angle of the velocity vector is theta. Because the magnetic moment is conserved, we equate sine squared theta naught on B naught with sine squared theta on B. Now assume that the particle has moved to the end of the magnetic mirror, where the magnetic field is a maximum Bm. Note that the particle will be reflected if the angle is greater than 90 degrees and lost if it is less than 90 degrees. Substituting B equals Bm and theta equals 90 degrees in the conservation equation results in this condition for particle reflection or loss, where sine squared theta is the ratio of B naught on Bm. That is, the particle will be reflected if sine squared theta naught is greater than the ratio of the magnetic fields, and will be lost if it is less. In other words, the particle will be lost if its velocity vector angle is less than theta naught. Because this initial velocity vector can trace out a cone with angle theta naught, it is known as the lost cone.